I'm going to quickly cover doing some of the stuff we saw in that Docker Compose file manually using regular Docker commands. So we can see here, if I do docker network ls, we'll see we only have the default networks. These are all default to Docker. You shouldn't reuse them. If you need to have any network stuff, you should create your own. I'll do docker volume ls, and we can see we have no volumes as well. Go docker ps, there's no running containers or containers that are not running. If I do docker images, we'll see we just have the MySQL container that I ran from a previous video. So let us create a new network. Do docker network create driver equals bridge, the default, and I'm going to just name this Fideliver. So if I do docker network ls, we'll see that we have a bridge network named Fideliver. Now I'm also going to do a volumes. Do docker volume create. Do the help menu here because the driver, I believe, yeah, local. So we'll do docker create driver equals local, which is the default, so I don't actually even technically need to define that. And we're going to name this Fideliver as well. It doesn't matter what you name it, it can be anything. Oh, to name it, we need the name flag. So docker volume ls. So we have a volume named Fideliver now. Let's do docker volume inspect Fideliver, and we'll see that it has a directory for us for that data. We can do the same with our network. So the network has this IP range. There's nothing in it, no containers in it, because we haven't started a container with that. So here's what I'm going to do. We can do docker run Ubuntu 16.04. So I'm actually going to run an image of Ubuntu 16.04, and inside of it, I'm going to run bash. And actually, I'm going to do some things where I'm going to want to split this into two screens. All right, so up here, I want to do docker run Ubuntu. Oop, actually, I'm going to need the dash IT flag, so it's interactive. And we're going to mount the volume here. I'm going to do the dash V flag, it's a little shorter. And inside of the volume we named Fideliper, I'm going to share the slash opt directory of this container. So docker run IT volume Fideliper, and then the network, we're going to connect to network Fideliper. We're going to run the container Ubuntu 16.04, and we're going to run bash so we can get into this container. Now, Ubuntu 16.04 is not local on my computer. Remember, I only had the MySQL one, so this is going to grab the Ubuntu 16.04 container from the Docker Hub, and it has. So let's see, I can do, I don't think I can do if config, it won't be there. So down here, I can do docker network inspect Fideliper, and if I scroll up here, we'll see that we have a container inside of it, the one I just created. It has a random name because I didn't name it, but its IP address is 172.18.02. Now let's go back up here, let's head to my opt directory, and we'll see if there's nothing in it. Now down here, I'm gonna make a second container. So for that, we'll do docker run dash it once again. The volume will be fideliper and do slash opt again. So the exact same folder will be shared to our data volume opt. I'm going to do network equals fideliper. So it'll be in the same network. And once again, we'll do Ubuntu 16.04 and we'll run bash. Great. So let's head to slash opt. Nothing in it. Let's touch a new file called Chris. That's there. Go back up here into our other container and we see that Chris is in there. So because these are two containers, both sharing the, the named volume Fideliper, both mounted to slash opt, I can see that when I go to slash opt in this container and in this container and create a new file or edit a file or delete a file, that will get reflected in both containers because they're both sharing out of this one named volume. Now, I'm gonna actually make a new tab here, I'm gonna SSH back into the same server. I don't wanna make any more uh, sections and tmux here because it just gets a little gnarly but we can see that we have docker running in my two containers here. If I do docker volume inspect the volume named Fideliper, we'll see that it isn't showing any containers connected to it because that's not how it works, but we'll see that we have that volume existing. We can list that out. We can see that Chris file is there. Let's do docker network inspect Fideliper. We'll see that our two containers are here, determined SHA, elegant wing, and one has IP address uh, of 02 and one is IP address of 03. Now let's do apt get update here. I'm going to install um, some utilities. Do apt get install IP utils ping to get the ping command. All right, so we have determined SHA and elegant wing. So over here, I'm inside of determined SHA, but I'm going to try to ping elegant wing. Now, unknown host. So we have a little bit of an issue here. I'm going to exit out of this container and exit out of this container. And we see we have no containers running here. We have these created. I'm just going to remove those quick. 
and we'll go back up here. And in this container, we're gonna give it a name. So we'll just call this one Ubuntu one. Down here, we'll start one and we'll call this one Ubuntu B. I went to type two, but typos are typos. Let's go over here. We'll do Docker inspect network fit helper. We have Ubuntu one and Ubuntu B, my terribly named containers, but we can see they have similar IP addresses two and three. So I'm up here. I don't have a ping command again. Let's install that. So apt get update and apt get install dash y ip utils ping. All right, let's try to ping Ubuntu one and we get our IP address. So I just pinged Ubuntu one. That's actually this container also, but it's still resolved to the correct IP address. If I do ping Ubuntu B, we get 172.18.03. So things to note. One, our Docker containers are in the network, which is perfect. If we want to use the convention of using the Docker container's name to talk to another container, we have to define a name manually. We can't just rely on the default names that Docker otherwise gives. And that's one of the things Docker Compose does. When we add this, a service name here, it also names the container that, so that the host names inside of the containers work correctly. So I hope that peels back some behind the curtain stuff of Docker when we see the magic of the volume and the network options used in the Docker Compose file. Basically, we can create a volume ourselves, we can create a network ourselves, and we can create new containers inside of or using those volumes and networks, and we can see how some of that magic is put together.